For a more in-depth look at the recent surge in Ebola infections, I'm joined now by Katherine Jacobson. She's an associate professor of epidemiology at George Mason University. Katherine, welcome back to the broadcast. We haven't been talking about Ebola as much in recent weeks, but now we've seen new news coming out that says there's been an uptick, 36 new cases in the Guinea area compared to nine just the week before. How do you explain this? Well, we don't expect the transition from such a large outbreak to zero cases to be smooth. We expect to see some upticks along the way. Uh, one of the things that's going on right now is that the governments of uh, Guinea and Sierra Leone are saying that it's time for people to start getting back to normal activities. So time to have children go back to school, to start having routine health care. Uh, and as we're trying to get people back into those sorts of normal activities, it means that the chance of having some of these exposures may increase a little bit. WHO just in the past week has said that it's going to reevaluate its policy. Did the WHO make any mistakes along the way? I think we'd all say that the early response back in the middle of 2014 was slower than it should have been. There does seem to be a strong movement forward with WHO. They've said their number one priority is making sure that we get Ebola cases down to zero, and especially that we don't let it cross into new countries. There was the sense that you know Ebola was actually being wiped out. How do we reinvigorate the governments at this point? We have to make sure, uh, in part, that international partners who may have said, it looks like Ebola is winding down, we can maybe withdraw some of our resources, that those partners don't abandon these countries until we truly are down to zero cases. So among other things, WHO this week has sent in a team to Guinea-Biso. There's concern that Ebola is going to cross the northern border of Guinea into a new country. By bringing in those resources ahead of time, we're trying to stay ahead of a possible emergent situation. You and I were talking 36 cases. That, that is a lot compared to the week before. But let's talk about you know, the geography of this area that we were discussing and how crucial and how uh, time is really of the essence here to, to get people in there to, to deal with the situation because of the borders right there. Right. It becomes so much more complicated for an international response when instead of working with the two currently affected countries, we might have to work with three. What we've seen in the past week that makes the uptick in numbers more important is not just that it's more cases, but that they were in several spaces across Guinea. So instead of all just being contained really near the capital city, to see these cases pop up close to the Guinea-Biso border, uh, when we hadn't seen cases there recently, did raise the alert level that we need to really be focusing, again, in the already affected countries on contact tracing and quarantine. So I would imagine one of the main factors is just to keep the communication uh, di uh, dialogue going and to keep talking about it and explaining it and, and, and keep it in the news. Right. From an international perspective, we need to make sure that everybody around the world who cares about containing Ebola, which is every country, that we are staying attuned to the situation. At the local level, it's about trying to help people have that sense of it's okay to get back to normal, while at the same time saying let's remember some of these contact precautions that we've learned and make sure that, for example, during funerals, we're continuing to exercise caution, even though we're trying to also get back to that sense of normal. All righty. Catherine Jacobson, thank you so much for clearing this up for us and uh, shedding new light on this uptick in cases of Ebola. We